So, uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Aliar and you're watching Tech Talk. Um, uh, welcome back on the channel. Uh, I am very happy to have you here. Um, today, um, you know, as you all know that we had a course going on in Tech Talk where I basically was covering the basic concept of customizing programming language, which is, it was a bit technical. It was uh, academic and which was for a very specific group of people, a very specific segment of people, especially students and um, people who want to learn programming language. <coughs> So I, Alhamdulillah, I am done with that, and um, I was I was thinking that what should be the next uh, topic that I should talk about? what should be the the next uh, next uh, discussion the topic discussion uh, on tech talk so that everybody can relate everybody can uh, come and think about it. So uh, so I I thought that I should now talk about something which everybody can relate, right? So I want everybody to know about something very different, something very special, something that they can take advantage from and they can take benefit. So. Uh, recently, I uh, did have the opportunity to present on uh, a global uh, platform about the contributions of uh, Islamic uh, scientists and Islamic society, especially when uh, the Muslims were uh, in rule in the world, right? So, <clears throat> as we all know that the Muslims came to the Western world around the 7th or 8th century, uh, the first place they conquered was the, um, you know, uh, the, the Iberian Peninsula. So, modern day Spain and Portugal are together known as the Iberian Peninsula. So when the Muslims came in, um, you know, they established society here, especially the city of Al-Andalus, the Muslim of Spain, the modern day Spain, their uh, science tribe, their philosophy tribe, their, um, you know, linguistic tribe, uh, religious, uh, you know, philosophies, and, uh, and that science and technology and arts and so on and so forth, they, they, they developed in this particular um, that, you know, period of time. So this was basically the start of the golden age of Islam in the world, especially in the Western world, because this was the first time the Muslims came uh, from the East and they conquered something or that they had started conquest in this particular region of the world. So I was talking about how Muslims were, you know, uh, were in favor of uh, diversity, they were in favor of pluralism, and how the society was tolerant at that particular period of time. It is said that um, the the rulers, the Muslim rulers of that time, clearly um, the Western world in a variant peninsula, they provided everybody with equal opportunities in terms of in the field of science, art, technology, irrespective of religious beliefs, uh, you know, irrespective of religion, caste, creed, caste, creed, uh, sect, and so on and so forth. Particularly, um, it was uh, it was was considered to be a tolerant society. Muslims were very very tolerant. They were very very respected of the differences of other sects and other religions, especially the book. The, the people of the book, the Ahl Kitab, uh, you know, the, the Christians, the, the Christians, the Jews, the Muslims, they came together and contributed in different fields of uh, science, art, technology, um, you know, philosophy, uh, metaphysics, uh, poetry, uh, and and so on and so forth. So this area of, of uh, in the Western world, the Iberian Peninsula, was an example of how Muslims had this progressive thought at that time and how they had this um, this, this attribute of tolerance and respect for other belief systems or the cultures and how they showed the the level of um, you know uh, religious tolerance at that particular time pluralism diversity or uh, the norms of that time so therefore this particular period of time is called the period of convivencia or the the period of coexistence people you know, Jews Christians Hindus and other ethnic groups came together they worked together and they studied together the academies of knowledge um, were, were very 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 famous and Muslims uh, Muslim caliphs established them in different parts of the, the Al Andalus and, and, and in, in, in across the uh, Iberian Peninsula, and they provided uh, with everybody with equal opportunity. So, this place, the Academy of Knowledge, the Darul Ilm, or they were basically places where um, you know different people came in, studied. There were books, there were librarians, there were scholars, and those scholars were basically paid by the government or from the treasury of uh, the caliph of that time. Islamic world produces great scientists, great doctors, great engineers, great philosophers, great poets. Um, you must have thought of, you must have heard about uh, uh, Messina, you must have heard about Uswarzmi, you must have heard about Nul Haytham, you must have heard about um, you know um, Jabir bin Hayyan, um, you know uh, Al Majrati, and so on and so forth. But today I would like to talk about a few of them uh, who contributed greatly, especially from the Iberian Peninsula. There were people from Baghdad, there were people from um, you know, from different parts of Egypt and, and in Arabia and so on and so forth. But regularly, I would like to talk about some great scientists who came from the place of um, from from modern day from modern day Spain and Portugal. So 
uh, before going into the science uh, scientists contribute or the great scholars i would like you know i would like to talk that i would like to talk about this, this concept which is very very important like uh, in the in the western world today it is considered that islam is a is a, is, is a is an extremist religion it is against science it is against development and progress um here i would like to um, you know go against that and i would say that islam is the most progressive um religion in the world you know quran uh, on multiple occasion has talked about how you should think how you should reflect how you should contemplate on different um you know different uh, things that are happening in the world it is said in the holy quran that everything is in in circle yeah and the stars the planets and so on and so forth and this was said in 6th century or 7th century when there were no scientific equipments or technologies to prove that and it was considered that this planet is not something which is floating which is revolving in in, in the planet and you no know, diff- there were different theories of course about this but one theory was that um, um you know you would uh, you would find that the earth is uh, not round so uh, therefore i would like to talk about in yeah i would i would talk i was talking about this that in in, a, in the western world um islam is considered to be a very conservative against development against progress and against science and so on and so forth and it is considered to be an extremist religion and it happened after the uh, especially the after uh, the, you know the, the incident happened in the early uh, 21st century uh, when the 911 happened and uh, you know the west looked at uh, islam as an extremist religion so but uh, as i i said that no islam is the most progressive uh, religion in the world and uh, in its core but yes there are different um, you know part of it and uh, there are different sects or different uh, segments of, of, of who call themselves islam, islamic uh, segments or who call themselves uh, who call their beliefs islamic beliefs but actually they are not the islamic beliefs so islam was responsible for the renaissance period in europe and it is is an established reality without islamic contribution to science arts and technology there uh, is no concept of renaissance in europe which was responsible for the uh, for the modern scientific development and technology especially the uh, the, the start of in post industrial revolution so uh, it is said that if there were no islamic uh, contribution to science we would not have seen um, you know such great development in different fields in various fields of uh, science and technology and we'll talk about that in the slides as well so um today i would like to talk about a um, few scholars and the first scholar would be uh, ibn rushd he was known as uh, ibn rushd in the western world and he was born uh, in 1126 so ibn rushd was the first person like, who contributed to the field of philosophy and he's considered to be the uh, pioneer or father of modern uh, rationalism and he, he talked about the he, he wrote extensively on the uh, on the on the you know, on the topics or on the on aristotle works and he was the first person who was responsible for uh, explaining complex ideas broken down the complex ideas into simple and understandable um, understandable understandable or accessible form because he thought that there are level of understanding there are level of rationalism so everybody can not understand the higher logic the higher level of uh, you know understand the higher level of rationalism so the, uh, the the concepts that are there in the higher level of rationalism should be broken down into simple words or simple Uh, understandable terms and terminology so everybody can understand um, them properly or um, you know uh, and easy so ibn rushd uh, evros was also responsible for the concept of uh, you know science and religion uh, coexisting together you know it is it was considered before him it was considered that science and religion cannot uh, you know cannot cannot coexist together they are separate things they are different things but uh, ibn rushd uh, argued that uh, if you uh, take the take the original science and if you take the original real religion and, and and you see them and you go deeper and deeper down and see you would find out that they both are same thing they represent the same thing and that is also uh, mentioned by the uh, 49th imam of smaili uh, muslim so um uh, hazrat uh, imam al sultan muhammad shah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, he has written this uh, in his book in the members of allah and he says that uh, proto science and proto religion are not two separate things they are two different parts of the same stream sometimes they uh, they they connect sometimes they separate sometimes they mingle together sometimes they you know they work individually or separately but if you look at the uh, if you look at, at the bottom of them if you look at them with the inner eye or the reality you will find out that they both represent the same thing. so ibn rushd was also the person who talked about this concept so Uh, these uh, people of especially spinerus and other scholars are known to be the polemics so then just not contributed in one field of uh, study but they contributed in different field of 
of, of science and technology and arts for example uh, ibn arush contributed in medicine and he was the first uh, he was uh, he was a doctor he wrote this book called kuliyat where he basically um, detailed how to diagnose and treat various diseases uh, for instance he talked about how human anatomy is important to really find out the cure for disease and it is very very important and in, in the modern scientific field you would find out that if you go to a doctor if you go to you know a big hospital they would not give out the medicine to you for the first time they would give you some tests they would they would prescribe you some uh some some tests and then so on some scanning or ultrasound or, or blood test cbc and so on and so forth so once you do that um they will see that report and then they will give you the medicine or something like that because they they first want to know that what is the cause of the, the disease once you find out the cause of the disease you would be able to cure it very easily so ibn rushd said at that time we're talking about in you know, 12th century where science was not that developed and, and we had a few uh, you know uh, resources to really uh, study the human anatomy he said that it is very very important for uh, for doctors to really find out the process the, the, the function of anatomy human anatomy for effective um for effective uh, treatment um uh, ibn rushd also contributed in the uh, in the field of astronomy um you know he was the first person who challenged the idea of geocentric model of the solar system so what happens in geocentric solar system what happens that it is considered it was considered that the earth is the center of the solar system and everything every celestial body including the sun revolve around the earth he said no it is not uh, it is not so he went against it he he said that it is not possible i don't know what he uh, post in the in an in an alternative but uh, he had since he had some so few of scientific technological resources especially the the the, the telescope the, the the observatories where he could find out but uh, since he had a few of evidence he was compelled to uh, really know about this idea and accept this idea but he uh, once in a time once in a time he said that this is not the right model of the solar system so such was the level of his understanding of the universe with limited resources with just naked eyes he was able to understand the uh, the, uh, the the basically the solar system so yeah so that was ibn rushd and without ibn rushd you know astronomy medicine uh, would not have been like this that we have in modern world the next uh, personality which i will talk about is uh, al zahrabi my personal favorite he was a great doctor he was a great pharmacist he was a great uh, dentist he was the first dentist in the world and he is known to be the father of modern dentistry and uh, he was also in orthopedics he had the knowledge of bones human bones and so on and so forth so but his most praised contribution to science was in the field of modern surgery and therefore he is known to be the father of modern surgery why because al zahrawi was the first person who came with the, with the idea that through surgery we can cure many diseases we can have treatment for many illnesses and diseases and so on and so forth for example he was the first person who gave the idea of removing tonsils from human body and uh, he was the first person who invented more than 200 surgical instrument many of them are still in use in modern uh, modern surgery so this was his great contribution he had his own hospital Uh, he was born in a very poor family, but he came to Al-Andalus, and there he uh, studied many books, and he uh, came up with the idea of understanding human heart, or uh, the idea of human anatomy uh, as well. So he had a great contribution in the field of surgery. He was the first person who came up with the idea of teeth extraction, teeth cleaning, and uh, he also like made uh, some artificial teeth using cow bones, and he said that you can have uh, artificial bone if you. uh you lose your original bones uh, original teeth sorry <laughs> so al zahrawi was from pharmacology he basically detailed uh, about different um, diseases and their the drugs that can be used to cure them um he he he, devi- he invented this um this device with a spool or splint uh which was used to you know tie broken bones uh in the modern uh, scientific in the modern field or in the modern orthopedic field it is known as casts but it is very similar to the splint that the al-zahrawi was able to invent in his time so he was a great great doctor and the next um uh, scientist which i would like to talk about is uh, al-jazari so al-jazari 
um, was like he was born in 1136 and of course in you know, Al-Andalus and he is known to be the father of modern robots. So you must have seen the you must have seen the robot for example you must have seen Sophia, Mecca. I have talked about them on, on TikTok you can find out them in my channel in my channel on YouTube. Um, they are modern uh, the most advanced robot. Uh, he's also attributed to come up with the uh, mechanical engineering principles and he came up with the idea of uh, step by step building a machine. So he was basically a father of automata. Without his ideas, perhaps he would not have the modern machines and so on and so forth. So he had a great competition with him of mechanical engineering. Um, he came up, he built this, um, you know, this machine, uh, you know, water raising machine, which was used for irrigation. It was, uh, you know, it was uh, functioned through using you know, water at that time. So most of the devices he uh, he created or he invented uh, were using water as a source of power or as a source of energy. So these were a few of them, like a few of them, uh, Muslim scientists who contributed greatly uh, in the field of science and technology. One more uh, personality or scientist I would like to talk about is uh, Ibn Sina. Ibn Sina was a great doctor. Um, he wrote this book uh, called Canon of Medicine, uh, which was uh, used as a source for the reference, medical reference book in the Western world for so many years. And he is still considered to be the father of modern doctrine, modern medicine contributed in different, uh, you know, is coming up with different drugs for, uh, and cure for different diseases and illness and so on and so forth. Ibn Sina was the same person who came up with the idea of, uh, you know, the quarantine. Uh, he was the same person who said that, uh, you know, you can isolate people to stop the spread of disease. But when the black dread spread, you know, across the Europe, uh, he saved his place. Uh, he saved his place by, uh, you know, by isolating people. He said that whoever is coming from outside the world should be quarantined for at least 40, 14 days and maximum 50 days. He was the same person who basically understood the viruses, the bacteria which are invisible, which are not, uh, which cannot be seen by naked eyes. Talking about in that period of time, uh, uh, you know, when the uh, coronavirus and the corona global pandemic came in, came in in 2020, um, the only cure, the only treatment for that particular disease at the start was uh, to isolate ourselves and to go into quarantine. So that was the first cure that he had and it was given for the first time by Messina. So these were the Muslim scientists who greatly, greatly contributed in different fields of science, technology, arts, meditation, philosophy, so on and so forth. So there are other, uh, you know, philosophers, for example, there is Anul uh, Hatton who gave the concept of uh, camera of Secura. Uh, he basically said that you are able to see because of the reflection of, of uh, the rays of the sun. Uh, before him, it was considered that the eye is producing the light and because of that, we are, we are able to see. But uh, he said that, no, that is not the case. And he proved that by his um, experiment called Camera of Secura. That, camera, uh, that experiment of Camera of Secura was responsible for the invention of modern camera that we are using. Similarly, we have uh, Jabir bin Hayyan who came up with the, uh, the idea of distillation, you know, separating different you know different elements from from fluid for example he came up with the idea of distillating and uh, distillation of petrol so on and so forth that is still in use uh so these were few of them who contributed we have the furnace gave the concept of uh, flying human flying so many so many scientists are there and uh, we can talk about them you know at very great length but uh, this video is already you know, has been 28 25 minutes i would i would not uh, track this anymore so I would conclude here and if you like this video, comment below that you want to know more about Islamic contribution to science and then technology. You want to learn about um, learn more about the you know the contributions of Muslim scientists and art technology. So we can tell the world that Islam is not an opinion. Islam is a great thing. So it's a brotherhood, progress, religion, science, it's a religion. That's a very big state. Islam is the religion of science because Islam in, in, in many verses of the Holy Quran, God says uh, that you should contemplate, but don't to contemplate, don't to think that what is happening around you. You should, you should think to understand the creation of God, how this creation works. That is basically an invitation towards science. Basically, an invitation towards understanding, towards contemplation, towards reflection, and so on. So this needs to be, uh, you know, it's needs, this needs to be spread around the world and uh, definitely to do that. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for watching once again. Uh, please uh, comment below what are the topics you want to know in the future. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel, like, share, and comment below.
and watching. See you next time.